Hi guys, welcome to Dr. Ram's Medical Coding Training Sessions. I'd like to thank each one of my subscribers. This is really invigorating for me to provide a more and more YouTube sessions. I definitely feel that this session would be helpful for y'all to crack this neat exam as well as for all the medical coders. Before moving on to this reproductive system per se, we need to know the knowledge about two specialties of medicine which we call it as gynecology and obstetrics. A gynecologist sometimes acts as an obstetrician and vice versa. Please break this word gynecology. We can break this as gynecos plus logos. Gynaco refers to woman and logos is study. So this specialty of medicine is involved with the treatment of diseases which occur in a female. Now, what does the word obstetrics mean? Obstetrics is a Latin term which has a meaning as obstare to stand opposite. So this technically defines the midwife. Before moving on to the procedures, let's talk about the organs that constitute the female reproductive system. We can divide the organs as the external genitalia and the internal genitalia. We have a special term for the external genital organs in a female, which we call it as vulva. Now let's see what these organs are. We have this pubic mons, or we say as a pubic mound. We otherwise call it as a mons pubis. We have this labia majora, labia minora, the clitoris, the vaginal introitus, hymen, and Bartholin's glands. What is this pubic mound? Pubic this should make you all think of the symphysis pubis. It is a region at which the two pubic bones unite and there we have a mound of fibro fatty tissue. And this is more increased in a woman. So we call it as a mons pubis. We have this longitudinal cutaneous folds called as labia majora. Majora means greater and labia as a lips. These longitudinal folds run from this mons pubis to the perineum. Now what is perineum? Perineum is a region that lies between this vulva and the anus in a female. We have this inner lip which we call as the labia minora which guards this clitoris and the uretral orifice. There is a space which we call it as a vestibule. This is a shallow depression running between the clitoris and this foreshad. Vestibule is a shallow depression that is enclosed within this labia majora and it includes this urethral orifice, the clitoris and this vaginal introitus. Bartholin's glands, these are the glands that are present in the vaginal introitus that provide lubrication to the female. Clitoris is a erectile organ which is present in the female and this is homologous with the penis in the male. The vaginal introitus, which is the opening of this vagina, sometimes have a mucous membrane called as hymen. For some women, this hymen may be very intact or it may be ruptured. Rupture of hymen is no longer a sign of virginity. All of these structures constitute the vulva. Now, if a surgeon is deciding to remove any of these external genitalia, we call it as vulvectomy. Let's move on to the internal organs. Here we need to know the vagina. This is a birth canal. The vagina has the anterior and the posterior walls and we call the vagina as colpo as a medical term. Vagina leads to a structure called as the cervix. Cervix, it forms its neck of this uterus and it is at the lower region of the uterus. Now what is uterus? We all know. We call it as a womb. The uterus is called as hystero or as metro and it contains the convex shaped body called as the uterine fundus, the corpus or the uterine body. When you see the structure of uterus, it is made up of various layers. We have the innermost mucous membrane called as the endometrium, the middle muscular layer called as a myometrium and the outer region we call it as the perimetrium. Removal of uterus, we call it as hysteroctomy. On each side of the uterus, we have a tube that runs, which we call it as the uterine tube or the fallopian tube or the salphins. 
At the terminal portions of these uterine tubes, we have finger-like projections called as fimbriae, of which one dilated region we call it as the ampulla. Now the fimbriae, they are actually helpful in the reception of the ovum. Now where does this ovum come from? Ovum, it is a female gamete. It is a female sex cell and that is being produced by the female gonad called as the ovary. Ovary, this is technically the gonad in the female and this helps in the production of these mature cells called as eggs or as ova. Ova is a plural form and ovum is a singular form. Let's see some processes that take place in a woman. We say as menstruation. What is menstruation? This is a physiological process that takes place in a woman during her reproductive lifestyle, during her reproductive lifetime. Here there is shedding of this inner endometrial lining and we call it as the menses. Prior to menses, there is a process called as ovulation which occurs on the 14th day prior to menstruation which we call it as ovulation. Ovulation helps in the release of this mature ovum from the ovary and this passes via this fallopian tube. In case fertilization occurs, what is fertilization? It is a union of the male and the female gamete. In case if fertilization occurs, the zygote, it is a product of fertilization and this gets implanted into the fundus of the uterus. So this process we call it as implantation or as nidation. In case, if nidation does not occur at the uterine fundus, we call it as an ectopic gestation, which means an extra uterine pregnancy. The most common type of an ectopic gestation is a tubal pregnancy, and it is followed by this ovarian pregnancy, or a cervical pregnancy, and abdominal pregnancies. See, such type of pregnancies cannot be allowed to continue because this would result either in the death of the baby or the mother. This period of a pregnant state we call it as a gestation. For such women, not a physician will have to terminate the pregnancy and this we call it as abortion. What is abortion? It is a premature termination of the pregnancy even before the viability of the fetus is achieved. There are various types as incomplete abortion, complete abortion or a septic abortion or a spontaneous abortion and a missed abortion. In case if it results in a normal gestation, then the patient will go for a term and at the time of delivery, we call that phase as labor. The person is in labor. What is labor? It is a physiologic process of expelling the fetus and the products of conception and this takes place in various stages. At the first stage, there is rupture of this amniotic membranes and then we have this uterine contraction and the cervical dilatation. Here, there is delivery of the baby and with the removal of this placenta, the delivery is complete. So labor is complete only with the expulsion of the products of conception. Let's move on to the pathological conditions that are associated in a female patient. Let's talk about this benign tumors of the uterus, which we call it as fibroids. Technically, the fibroid, it is a tissue that is made up of the fibrous tissue and the muscular tissue. So we call it as a fibroma or a myoma. A fibroma technically means a tumor arising from the fibrous tissue and a myoma is a tumor arising from the muscular tissue. So we can also call it as fibromyoma and a leomyoma. Leo refers to the connective tissue. So you should understand that an ordinary fibroid can be called either as a fibroma, a myoma, a fibromyoma or a leomyoma. And also there are various classifications based on the location of the fibroids as submucous or intramural myoma. Whenever there is abnormal bleeding from the uterus, we call it as metravagia. Sometimes there is an increased menses, we call it as menorrhagia. When there is an inflammation of the cervix, we call it as cervicitis. As a symptom of cervicitis, say a chronic cervicitis, the female can have a white discharge, which is an abnormal discharge and we call it as leukorrhea. Please break this word as leuco plus rhea. Leuco refers to white and rhea as flow. 
So it is a white discharge. And the ovary is also a site of multiple cysts. So ovarian cysts are pretty common in the ovaries. This can also result in a condition called as PCOD, which is polycystic ovarian disease. In the endometrium, there is a condition called as endometriosis, which results in the formation of chocolate cysts and this is a very painful condition. Most of the time when a patient is being diagnosed with endometriosis, they will have to undergo hysterectomy, which is the removal of the uterus. Let's move on to the surgical procedures that are being performed in a woman. First of all, we can see as DNC, which is dilatation and curatage. DNC is usually performed either to treat endometrial hyperplasia see in a woman who has excessive bleeding. So we call it as a thickened endometrium. At that time, they can also perform a DNC or as a treatment of abortion, DNC is being done. A curate is being employed and the endometrial tissue is being removed. There is another way of doing it called as dilatation and evacuation. Hysteroscopy is the endoscopic visualization of the uterus. Oophorectomy. Ophoritis is a condition which is an inflammatory state of the ovaries and ectomy refers to the removal of these ovaries. So ophorectomy technically means the partial or the complete removal of the ovaries. Removal of the fibroids is called as a myomectomy. Please do not get confused with hysterectomy in which case there is removal of the entire uterus. Hysterectomy, there are various types as vaginal hysterectomy, abdominal hysterectomy and a supracervical hysterectomy. You need to know whether the fallopian tubes and the ovaries are also removed or not. And before that, you should also know the weight of the uterus or the weight of the specimen so that you can take these codes accordingly. And we also have separate codes for laparoscopic hysterectomy. Let's see the coding aspects of this gynecologic and obstetrics coding. We will find all these gynecologic and obstetric conditions that are being listed in the IC Tensium. The obstetric condition codes begin with the alphabet O and the gynecologic conditions begin with the alphabet Yen. The procedures that are being performed in both these specialties are being classified under the female reproductive system of the CPT coding manual. Let's see a coding scenario in which Preeti undergoes a cesarean delivery because of a breach presentation of the fetus. Let's see how we can code this service plus a medical condition. The diagnosis code that we need to report is O32.1XX0 and the CPT code as 59514. We have come to the conclusion portion of this session. I believe this session would have been very useful to you all. Kindly share this video to all students who are preparing for the NEET exams because I am preparing all these sessions keeping the NEET exam in mind. So please share with your brothers, sisters or relatives or your friends, whoever you know, so that they can also be you know, beneficial from these sessions. So I'll see you in the next session. Till then, take care. You can contact us at 805-60-855-96-99-62-791072.